Our next speaker is Dr. Ken Sag. Ken received his uh, bachelor's degree at Michigan, his medical degree at Northwestern. Uh, he got uh, a, a master's in science and epidemiology at Iowa. He uh, was a resident at Northwestern, a fellow in rheumatology at Iowa, uh, professor now at the uh, Division of Clinical Immunology and Rheumatology at UAB. He's director of the uh, CERTS at UAB and associate director of the UAB Center for Metabolic Bone Disease. Uh, he's won the uh, Teacher of the Year Award. Uh, he's gotten the Max Cooper Research Award. He's been uh, co-chair of the AMA Consortium on Osteoporosis Quality member, uh, Measures. He's a member now of the FDA and Arthritis uh, Drugs Advisory Committee, co-chair of the ACR Quality Measures Subcommittee, Board of Trustees National Osteoporosis Foundation, He's been the uh, osteoporosis section editor for the current opinions in rheumatology, osteoporosis section editor for current rheumatology reports, and the editorial board of arthritis care and research in the archives of internal medicine. And this morning, he's going to talk about glucocorticoid induced osteoporosis. Thanks very much, David, and good morning. It's a great pleasure to be here and to see this uh, wonderful course continuing to thrive and to have an opportunity to talk about a topic of interest to all of us since uh, this is one of our favorite drugs. Despite all the great advances that have occurred in our field, we continue to rely heavily for better and for worse on glucocorticoids. Uh, Steve's talk was wonderful. It's always great to, uh, to hear him speak and to hear some of the controversies in his uh, very uh, evidence-based but yet common-sense approach to how we take care of our patients. Here are my disclosures, and uh, these are also contained in your handout. And I think it's always nice to start with the case, and this is uh, my favorite case, and I'm sure one of your favorite cases, too. Not, not favorite in that it's uh, something we like to see happen, but favorite in terms of this being really the poster child for our problem. This is the older Caucasian woman who you diagnose with temporal arteritis and appropriately start on high-dose glucocorticoids. And she develops the very predictable complication of compression fractures of her spine within the course of a year. So this is what we're trying to prevent. This case occurred at a time when our options were quite limited. But it's not just this patient that we worry about. Uh, here's the guy who I saw at the Iowa City Veterans Hospital who was referred to rule out rheumatoid arthritis but had one of the worst looking spines of a man his age and had been on 10 milligrams a day of prednisone for the past 10 years for management of his COPD. And here's one of our younger-ish lupus patients who 